Don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button, and notifications button for all the good stuff we've got coming. As uh, Maisha says, you know, I, I grew up right next door to her family, right? And I was, even at that time, I would always say I got along with females very well back in that day, right? So they would oftentimes come and chat with me and talk with me. And there was this one case, I don't think I've ever told the story before. There was this one woman who lived down the street, I won't say her name, but she um, wanted to become an actress. I was working in the area of sales and marketing, and I was traveling around the country, you know, young age, uh, making some decent money before theater, right? <laughs> but I'd start going on audition. When I'd come home, I'd go on audition with her to be moral support for her, you know? And uh, oftentimes, uh, I, I would uh, get chosen for the parts, and she wouldn't. And then we finally ended up at the rep, and we were auditioning for one of Bruce Milan's plays called No Flowers in Cement. And I got cast in that one, and she did. Okay, And the more tragic part of that story is, oh, oh some months later, because she, this young lady was also you know, into drugs and prostitution. She was trying to find a life. She ended up killing herself. Okay, That struck me very hard to say, well, maybe she was my angel leading me to another path in life. So why don't you give this path a chance? So I started getting very serious about it, right? And started doing a couple of other shows and eventually began, I had, you know, sales and business background. So I went on, Bruce asked me to come on staff. So I went on staff with him, you know, and uh, the theater, you know, cause you know, we were doing children's theater there too. So we, I was getting a little bit into the children's theater and then the adult theater. Uh, now the jump, sort of, I would call it jump ahead a little bit. I say the, one of the fascinating moments, and I've had many fascinating moments there, still have fascinating moments there. But one of the fascinating moments I had there, which I think in many ways sort of lifted the rap up to a whole new statue. Uh, that we weren't, because we were still sort of coming out of children's theater, going into the adult theater. And there was a show called Petrified Forest. And uh, uh, there was one night we were rehearsing in the building, and this show, these are old gangster shows, right? So we had a lot of weapons <laughs> uh, 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 that looked very real. And this kid who lived in the neighborhood, we called him the little bad kid who lived in the neighborhood, went and called the police uh, uh, on us and told the police that we were holding people hostage in the building, right? So so the police came and circled the building, did all that, did all that, did all that. Finally come in, you know, uh, everybody was sweating. It was a, I don't know if the, today it would have probably been a, a little mess, but back then it was just a close call. Well, it turns out Another friend of ours uh, reported the story that I told him to uh, the major press. So it hit the press. And it actually uh, had quite a, you might say, scary but positive impact that I say set the rep uh, in, 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 in motion, moving it up. Then turns out that we, uh, when we did the show, uh, one of my, I guess, the more flattering reviews I'd ever received was from a, a, a critic by the name of Jay Carr. And I think at that time, Jay Carr was working for the Boston Globe. And and there was a Sunday morning uh, on the front pages of the Detroit News, a picture of me and a picture of Humphrey Bogart. That was a very, very uh, uh, interesting moment to me. I I was having fun with it. I, I didn't know all the consequences, you know, 
But from there on, I went into, you know, doing some other plays that really still stick with me this day. Uh, and some of them I would still, like even telling Bruce, we need to redo, we need to do these shows again because we have a couple of generations and never seen them. And they need to see them, you know. Uh, uh, with my issue, with what's called Valley Song. And then another one of my favorites is David Mamet's American Buffalo. Uh, uh, what's the other one? Uh, 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 the Blood Knot. These are all primarily South African plays, you know. The Homeless was one I still love to do. And I, I'm still trying to figure out a way to get that play done again. That was the one with Leah and I. And I, I think even when I look back on that, I say, I sort of cheated her a little bit on that. I want to get back on stage with her again <clears throat> to go to a whole nother height. And if not necessarily with that show, another show. Yeah. But like I say, I've done literally hundreds of it. Uh, I've directed uh, uh, many of them as well, you know. And uh, again, I think the rep is just beginning. And Lord, you know, we, we, we all stay supportive of each other. It'll go where the rep is just beginning to get its full national recognition as a new generation of management is coming on uh, uh, on board. Uh, uh, again, I, I'm i still, uh, you know, like I say, very excited about it. It's still a, a very adventurous journey to me. And, uh, yeah, like I say, it's, it's been a real asset to, to, to Detroit and, and the nation. Another another little quick story I'll tell you there. I said, me and uh, William Boswell, as a matter of fact, actually started the uh, Detroit Repertory Theater Workshops. And uh, at the time we were running them, we were running them, uh, you came four, four times a week, three to four times a week. A and then, of course, as you know, the, the theater decided, because uh, we were just doing it in the summer when the theater was closed. <clears throat> but then the theater started doing it. I'd also uh, like to say at some point, I said, I'd, I'd like to see not just even whether the rep does it, anybody else does it now. I'd like to see some uh, workshops out there that uh, are doing, are working with uh, young actors three and four times a week. Because I think one of the things that still holds us back in the city, we need a strong, stronger acting pool, period. And I think that'll help uh, even put the rep on the map. Uh, on a more national and maybe even world class schedule, yeah. But there are many, many great stories. I could go on talking for another three days about some great stories we had, yeah. Well, the significance of that, certainly at that time, as as uh, Jay Carr pointed out, was he had always thought, first of all, that nobody could have done that role as well as Humphrey Bogart. Uh, and at, at the same time, it was a, 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 a great message on uh, what you call interracial casting, period. I think there was a larger message there that uh, because there were a lot of the critics who were fighting interracial casting at that point. And I think Jay Carr was probably one of the first to, uh, 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 to come out and acknowledge that his own prejudice had been moved, uh, his own bias. Uh, racism, whatever term you want to use, had been moved off that he now had learned to look at actors as actors. And to even go, it goes even further than that because uh, what happens too, we say a lot of roles are not gender locked. And so at the rep, a lot of times what somebody would traditionally think of as a, as a, a male role, women play those roles or still do it today. They play those roles. So it's both racial and gender, uh, 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 I, call, I call it progress, you know? And for those who don't know, I say at that time too, to get any uh, sort of uh, recognition from the Boston Globe would be equivalent to getting something from the New York Times. And that's a biggie in the, in the industry, you might say, yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah, a, that's significant a significant piece of um, Detroit rep history. And that was, that production, and therefore that article was from the early 1970s, maybe mm -hmm. late 1970s. Either way, decades 
before Broadway and a, a lot of the theaters across the country jumped on board, are jumping on board, are still behind on the idea of casting regardless of race, ethnicity, sometimes gender. Um, so, so good work, Robert. The article right. actually said, I didn't think anybody could play that role except for um, uh, Humphrey Bogart until I saw Robert Vogue Williams. And I fully admit that I couldn't see a black man in that role, period, until I saw Robert Vogue Williams. So, yeah. so Robert, all three of you, I'm so honored that you guys, that I've had any, I haven't got to act with Dory directly. I think I've auditioned with her at other theaters or maybe this theater, but we haven't got our production yet. I played Maisha's mom. Maisha, can you talk about um of the audiences? I remember uh, David Mamet's show, The American Buffalo, uh, and it was just a three character show. Uh, but every other word in Mamet's script was a MF or F U or this. <laughs> and I remember, and it was a great, great, great acting lesson for me because I remember the first weekend and maybe even part of the next weekend, audience walked out in droves. They got up and walked out. And we had to ask ourselves, what happened? What happened? Well, we were all, I guess you say, young enough actors, and I forgot who directed that show. But what I learned then, that you could use any language if you went far enough beneath the words to find the light. After we discovered that, nobody walked out again. And, and, you know, the rep gets a lot of church groups, right? Not one of them walked out. So it was a great acting lesson for, that, for me on that. One of the greatest lessons or, or, let's say, pieces of spirit that I've taken in come from people like, D. Andrus, very, very lovable, lovable people that you needed them when you were coming, especially as a young actor, that they had uh, many ways of keeping you comfortable and, and making you believe in yourself and that kind of thing. And I would say D. Andrus, Council, uh, Council Cargo, you know, and, uh, and, say, and the likes of Milford Dean, who uh, these are all left us. I said, but they, to me, left a legacy of what we need to do as good people on, on earth. So those 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 images constantly float around in my head. Yeah. Thank you for making me cry, Robert. Robert. Okay. 